uh, I, I know uh, inconvenienced uh, a great many people, which is which is terribly unfortunate. Um, I, I won't pretend to be able to speak to each and every uh, district and the volume of applications that were received and those that we were able to grant. Certainly, as we move forward, if we have another opportunity to to do some more work in this space as resources allow, we will take all of this uh, under consideration and, and try to do much better. But all I can say is that I, I completely respect and acknowledge uh, all of the criticism that we've received about this program. We, on on balance, believe that it did uh, quite a bit more good um, uh, than uh, than harm, and and certainly we want to make sure we're doing as best we can to achieve all those equity goals in the future. Uh, quite a, quite a few more businesses. Uh, applied and we were able to fund uh, the council's generosity and the speed with which you all acted is remarkable and very commendable and uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure it's implemented better uh, as we move forward. Okay, hold on one second. We have uh, Councilman Gilbert or with his hand up. Councilman Gilbert, did that have to do with item 5A, sir? Yeah, I, I was, I was uh, echo what my colleague Councilwoman Kumra was saying, you know, it was kind of disappointing to see the numbers that in some districts it has a lot more than others. Um, uh, she is correct that some of these districts, um, they are recouping from the tornado situation and, uh, and some of these organizations don't have the resources to actually to fill out some of the papers quickly as some has the resources. So they was kind of uh, behind. So I just, I would say, I'm disappointed in some of the outcome of some of the uh, some districts getting a lot more than others. Uh, I know mine was very low, and I believe Kumar, Councilwoman Kumar was very low too. But uh, hopefully, in the future, that they put in consideration that uh, that some of these individuals, and I'm, matter of fact, I believe they already some of them know this because I think we had this this money set aside uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, and, and then. We got a lot of businesses out there that, that needs the money, but just don't know how to maneuver to actually get it. Uh, so hopefully we can do a little bit better job. Okay. All right. Um, I see our attorney, uh, Mr. Noblet, you got your hand up. Uh, the only reason it was because uh, Councilman uh, Oglesby was at least on your next item that you had on your agenda. I was going to talk about that. If, oh, uh, that's, the, uh, that's for the next item? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any, anybody else have anything for Mr. Hayes before we cut him loose? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, I see. Councilman Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, would, I would like to ask if the council is okay with this, um, that there is an analysis done on you know the, some specific reasonings as best we can come up with. I, under, I understand the tornado is, 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 is quite an impediment to being able to fill out paperwork, but I, I would like to see where, if, if we can discover where some weak points were in some of these districts. I, I, I personally didn't think District 2, you know, for all the small businesses we have, got their fair share but I can't say for sure it was not because they just didn't, you know, as, as they say, they didn't buy a ticket. But I would like to hear, you know, what actually occurred uh, in, in the process to sort of say to us what, you know, why this district didn't do as well and, and why, why th you know, things didn't happen as well as we would have liked. Not because I want to level more criticism, because if we do have another crack at this, I'll try to, without, you know, without trying to get around some preempted state law that allows us to pinpoint, you know, underserved districts that um, we could maybe help a little bit more. Um, and Mr. Attorney, tell me when I'm stepping across state boundaries here. Uh, but but I, I would like to see the process not only happen again, Obviously, I wouldn't like to see another pandemic. I wouldn't like to see murder hornets. I wouldn't like to see any of this stuff. But if it should happen again, I would like to, us to have a blueprint from the first time of what we can do to actually make it better for District 9, make it better for District 5. I think District 4, you know, maybe that is the tornado, but I'd still like for us to explore that to find out what we can do better in the future, you know, not so much for what went wrong the first time, but what we can do better in the future to make it better and more equitable. Thank you. Councilman, we need to get ready for locusts this summer. Councilman Oglesby. 
Yeah, I just want to uh, mention, I mean, I'm in District 7, so obviously I shouldn't have a whole lot to, to say on this matter. But one thing I will allude to was, I believe it was last week, uh, the chairman commissioned me to look at these things like this uh, within these processes in ECD. So uh, this will be one more item that I will get with the, uh, the team with the Economic Development Department and the, and the uh, administration to make sure that there's more equity and more uh, assistance moving forward when we have these programs to make sure it crosses or reaches everybody who needs to have an opportunity to at least a platform. So uh, that, that'll be one of the things on, on the ECD committee's plate uh, that we'll look at sooner rather than later. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Ledford, uh, you have your hand up for this, this item. Yes, sir, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, just to chime in, since District 4 was mentioned, yeah, I was a little disappointed to see a lower numbering, uh, considering I think we have a tremendous amount of small businesses that pay a lot of tax base uh, in District 4. But, and I do think that the tornado had a tremendous impact as most people are still trying to pick up what was left of their lives off the ground. And uh, so I think we were at a severe disadvantage uh, trying to get in on on some of this. I do know I will give some credit. I know Mr. Hayes is probably still on here. We'll give a little credit. I did help uh, put the pieces uh, direct contact to uh, to the process without obviously being involved. And I do know that some of the businesses on that list of nine, I believe was a total for us, were able to to get funded. Um, and that was encouraging. But um, I think it, uh, we got hit twice, but we'll, we're we're getting back up. Well, it's not how many times you're knocked down, but as long as you get up one more time, you're you're on your feet. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, Mr. Hayes, if you will uh, be prepared this afternoon, maybe another business to give us a uh, update on on maybe community testing, and then what we're still doing to reach out to small businesses, if you would. I'd be very happy to. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Um, We'll now move on to items on first reading. Uh, did Madam Clerk, I think we read, uh, <laughs> I think we read 6A. Uh, Mr. Noblet, I think you had something to share with us mm -hmm. on that. Uh, yes, sir. And, and um, Mr. Oglesby had at least had uh, contact with the folks who were the applicants for this uh, petition for de-annexation and they have at least made an, an offer to withdraw their request for de-annexation, which is on the uh, agenda for this evening. And um, I, I will uh, at least be responding to that here in writing this afternoon. If that be the case, then y'all will not have to worry about that this evening, unless you wanna uh, take up a matter where the applicant is requesting to withdraw. Councilman Oglesby, you wanna weigh yeah. in? Yeah, yeah, he's absolutely right. Uh, we've had, ex I've had, and. Uh, the city attorney's office with special thanks to uh, Melinda Foster. We've had extensive conversation about some of the uh, concerns they've had uh, with, with uh, wanting the request and, and digging deep down into it and finding out that there were concerns across the boards which have since been remedied. Uh, they want to withdraw their request. So I'm, I'm real happy and excited about that because they okay. uh, brought some very valid points and uh, should should not anything happen, that will be my motion uh, to uh, accept their withdrawal. At six o'clock, okay. At six o'clock. Very well. Uh, Councilman Ledford, I see your hand. Yes, sir. This uh, is a question for Phil. Um, Phil, can you give me some clarification? So this, the applicant asked for a withdrawal and we can withdraw this. Um, I'm a little confused on the process because this was brought up earlier where I've had an applicant ask for um, a deferral and maybe that's the difference. Ask for a deferral two weeks in advance, but we still have to make an action on it. And it seems, I'm just a little confused because now that this one has come up, this is on tonight and we're, we're still gonna take action, I guess, to accept the withdrawal. Yes, sir, either accept right. the withdrawal or not. 
Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So I guess that we still have to take action. Yes, sir. Uh, in in the, both both cases, and and that's where I uh, my fault. I'm being a little scattered over here in District Four still with some things. Is uh, I figured that we have the two weeks, but I thank you for that answer to that question. And and as long as there's action by the body uh, agreeing to do that, there's no problem in that regard on your case for next week as well. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, Councilman Ledford, let me respond uh, one thing uh, to you. Um, one of the reasons we needed to put that back on is it was a deferred item and it was deferred to a date specific. Right. So on that date, we, we, even though, even though two weeks out, they knew they wanted to defer it again, we still had to take action on the date that it was deferred to. So thank you for that clarification. Yep. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, we move on to resolutions. Um, 7A, please. Resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Economic and Community Development to enter into a second agreement to exercise option to renew is substantially the form attached with Rivermont Youth Athletic Association, Inc. for the use of property located on a portion of tax map number 118KA009 at 1096 Lupton Drive for an additional term of one year. Um, Mr. Noblet, I see your hand is, is up. Is that from before or? It is from before and I will get it off there. Yes, Thank sir. you. Okay. I see no questions about item 7A, so we'll move Mr. on to 7. I'm, oh, here we go. Now I got a hand. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, late, I'm late reacting and I'm sorry, um, but we a few of these, hopefully, uh, well, I guess uh, two or, two, or uh, two of them anyway. Um, these are basically, I guess, for lack of a better word, leases to youth associations, uh, one in District 2 and one in District 5. Um, my question is, um, Mr. Attorney, uh, th these are these are one year, and I, I know we do this every year for renewal for these youth associations, but does the city, I'm not sure if these leagues are even going to try to play or try to do anything, but does the city have any liability uh, if they do decide to move forward and have have games and things and see uh, and we have some we have we we have some uh, positive tests that go on or, or 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 has the administration done anything to try to check what their procedures will be or even if they're going to plan to have leagues? Uh, I, I guess those are my questions around those those these next two. Well, well, right now, uh, under the governor's order and the mayor's orders here, any uh, groups of assemblies of more than 10 people would not be allowed. So that sort of gets your baseball team right there, usually. So that's that's a problem insofar as two ball teams going on. I'm not sure about the extension of time that might be necessary before people are going to feel comfortable with uh, actually having them here. And if this is uh, the athletic association, they would have a number of different types of sports in addition to just baseball and uh, soccer and uh, football for that matter if they have any of those events. Normally there would be uh, some type of insurance coverage that would protect the city and would say they would indemnify and hold the city harmless for most events, but we've never had an issue like this before. And I guess the other, the other question would be is the, the maintenance that surrounds these facilities. Uh, and of course we have different arrangements with different groups and, and, and you know, the, I, I guess it would be, uh, I'm not sure, maybe the parks department that would be responsible for some maintenance. Uh, are we, are we I, I guess my question is, are we in contact with these youth associations to know what we are supposed to be doing in this coming year under this agreement, as best we can know under these conditions? Uh, th that would be an issue for YFD. Uh, on our end of it, we, we prepared the agreement at least to be done. And I, I guess in connection with these athletic associations is the rate that we're charging for the term here fair if they can't use it for the entire term as well. That's another issue here. And they may not be able to use it for any portion of it. All right. Not, 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 not sure I'm satisfied, Mr. Chair, but I think we've gone as far as we can go with that. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. I'm just not sure how. Thank Council, you. Councilman Gilbert, you got a follow up. Yeah, let me go a little bit further. Uh, Phil, I yeah. think 
uh, Councilman Mitchell was saying, if if the association is not doing what we advised them to do, then what? Are we liable? Well, well the, the first issue for the city would be whether we would close the facility for them to be able to use it. I believe they are closed at this point in time. It's an issue about opening back up and then feeling comfortable enough as a city uh, uh, location to allow people to do that. We, we had some loosening this past week regarding city parks, uh, but uh, the question becomes, again, any gathering of more than 10 people is not allowed on property. So that sort of limits you on any sports team. So that, that's where we are right now based upon the rules that the mayor has adopted here. Liability of these issues has not been determined by anyone to this point. Uh, one would argue that every time that you are assuming the risk by going to a place and participating in that, then that might be a, an, an avoidance or a defense to the city on those, those issues. But uh, you know, it's got to be more than 51% of the liability under Tennessee law uh, that would result in that working. So, uh, you know, the, there is potential liability if someone did develop a disease and we were negligent in starting back up too quickly. So based off, you know, the city has to be dictated by the state. So whatever the state says that can open, it needs to open, right? Or can it be? we would be following their rules as to what they say is appropriate. It, the, there is a provision in the governor's order that does say that any uh, owned property of the city is subject to the city's determinations here. So if it's a city owned park, you could regulate when that would open. Okay. Okay, uh, council, these are like items. Uh, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of hesitancy and, and some doubt. I would like to take these together, but if there's some objections, let me know now. We'll take them separately uh, when we vote on them tonight. Councilman Mitchell, Gilbert. I'm fine. I, 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 don't, I don't mind them being together at all, Mr. Chair. I just okay. was not hearing from somebody that sounds like they have a plan to deal with it this coming year. Um, okay. And I'm, I, get, I, I, don't, I don't know that this would be youth and family development anymore. It might be parks department. I'm not even sure, but I, I, I wouldn't mind hearing before I vote on it from someone at six o'clock. Okay. Um, Mara, I, I know you're out there. I'm going to ask if you would have somebody maybe in parks, uh, whoever would be over this join us at our six o'clock meeting before we vote. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and read 7B uh, as well, Madam Clerk, just for the record. A resolution authorizing the Administrator for the Department of Economic and Community Development to enter into a second agreement to exercise option to renew and substantially to form attached with the Lakeside Youth Association, Inc for the use of property located at tax map number 129CA018 for an additional term of one year. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, let's go do 7C. A resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Economic and Community Development to enter into an independent contract service standard form agreement and substantially the form attached with CBRE Inc for specified real estate services for a term of one year with the option to renew for two additional terms of one year each. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Coonrod, sorry. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I did ask if this could be explained to me and what I received was is that, um, you know, the hyperlinks, <laughs> I can click on that and it should be additional information. Phil, uh, will you make sure that I'm getting an email that includes the hyperlinks? Because all I'm receiving is just um, to read only view. I'm not getting the hyperlinks to click on it. However, she did send it today. Now, I requested this last week. Um, and what I did find out, there was no additional information as to who, you know, why, what's the need for having to contract with this organization and, and, all that we're going through, why are we contracting with somebody that's outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee, when we should be, we just talked about this, 
looking at local people to do exactly what they're saying. And what are, are they going to be buying property, leasing property, or they're going to be just taking an overview of it, of the, the properties that we have? Like, are we, what is it about? I did speak with Donna briefly. She said that um, it was about the fire hall was seeking to get property. Nothing is in this document that I printed off from the city's attorney's office states that that's what the purpose of it is. So again, could somebody explain exactly what this is about, why we're needing the contract, and is it not anything that we can't do that we've been doing <laughs> that we it needs to be contracted out? Um, yes, ma'am. Vice, Vice Chair, I don't I don't see Miss Williams. No, sir. On, uh, do you? Okay, I didn't. Um, and I'm not even seeing Mara now. Is she? Do you see Mara? Yes. Okay. Br bring Mara on, please. If I knew my phone was here that time. Hello. Thank Ms. you. Miss Sullivan. I would like um, Richard Beeland to answer your questions, please, if oh, that's all I, right. I see his hand up now. Please yes, uh, bring, thank you. bring Mr. Beeland on, Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, this this did start out as a need for the fire department. They were wanting to purchase some property, and um, we needed an a, a an agent to be able to represent the city. A lot of times, when the city approaches a seller, um, the price can change when they know it's the city. And there are other opportunities to use an agent as well. Um, Public Works has needs when they need to purchase property for. Um, any sorts of infrastructure projects. So we um, got with purchasing and uh, issued an RFP and the committee reviewed the applicants to, or the um, response, responses to the RFP. And this was the firm that was uh, chosen. And I'll say too, it's, it's no different from any other um, real estate um, agent. The, the fee is, is something that would be paid for um, not by the city, but by the um, person who was so, um, the seller. Yes, sir. Okay. Councilwoman Coonrod, do you have any follow up questions for Mr. Beeland? Yes. So, was it a bid process where people, you know, bid it on to be the contractor, or were, did you just send it out to certain people and they responded to it, or how did that process work? So we, it, a lot it, of people here locally didn't receive this information. It was a process through purchasing, just like a request for proposal process. And um, we, uh, it was advertised and uh, we, we had a deadline for people to respond to it. And then we reviewed the responses. Okay. Is she, any, any follow up? Oh, no, that's it. I'm just, you know, concerned about it. Like, why? Okay. I don't have anything else. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Beelan before we let him go? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Beelan. Oh, yeah, I do have chair. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, he said that originally that it did start out as being a fire hall. So now what is it for now since the fire hall no longer is seeking for that property? Are we just keeping them? as an ace in a hole in case we need them before the year expire. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so it, it did, it was, it, we don't know who we may need it for. There may be some other um, opportunities that we need to have an agent represent us when we are, we are trying to uh, uh, make a transaction with property. So uh, this, this part, this, this organization would be for any of the departments, not just for the fire department or it'd be for any department. Okay, and did, who was the firm previously that we used prior to contracting with them? Did we have one? We did not. Okay. And it's merely for a one-year term as well for anything Correct. that happen in that one-year time. Is it uh, with additional, in case we want to renew? I see that's in there as well. And typically how we've been doing it is just been being renewed if the council agree with it or not. Now, is that one of these situations? We always bring our renewals up to council every time there is a, a renewal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bill. And I'm gonna make sure to note that on this day, what was said. So when it come back up and we're told something different, I'm gonna remind you of that statement. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Beelan. Madam Clerk, 7D, please. A resolution authorizing the administrators for the Department of Economic and Community Development and Public Works to enter into a joint partnership agreement with the Community Foundation of Greater Chattanooga for project management services provided by the Public Works Department and the Public Art Division and the receipt of donations to support the site work for the Ed Johnson Memorial portion of the Walnut Plaza project. Councilwoman Coonrod, I see your hand. Is that from before or you do, do you have another question? Uh, you, you've disappeared off the screen. Let's go to Councilman o, uh, o, Oglesby. No, Mr. Chair, I just want you to know we will be taking action on this item tonight. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, seven, seven, eight, uh, Madam Clerk. A resolution to confirm the mayor's appointment of Kate Farmer as city treasurer. All right, thank you. Uh, I think Ms. Farmer is on the call with us. Uh, wanna wanna what, do that one right now, Mr. Chair? Let's go ahead since- uh, Sounds since good. I'm gonna bring her in where she can share her screen so everybody can meet her face to face. So to Absolutely. speak. Absolutely. Ms. Farmer, you should be good if you unmute and start video. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you guys for uh, bringing me into the city of Chattanooga. I'm very excited. Uh, it's going to be um, good to work with everybody. I just um, want to let you know that I have some background in finance. I've done a lot of grant work, projects management, and then um, I'm looking forward to the warm weather. I came from Wyoming and so I came out of the snow and I'm looking forward to a warm welcome. <laughs> All right, anybody have any questions for Ms. Farmer at this time? Uh, let me get back over, Councilwoman Coonrod. Oh, no, I don't have any questions for Ms. Farmer, but oh, welcome, oh. welcome, welcome. But I did want to ask, um, because previously we said uh, once the pandemic had started that our positions were being on hold for hire. Now, was her position already in the process for hire prior to the pandemic hit? Well, let me go see who's got their hand up that wants to answer that. Miss Sullivan, looks like you have your hand up. I do. Thank you. Yes, her position was already um, in process. We were um, interviewing during that time, and um, actually, we had scheduled Miss Farmer to come on a plane ride to to meet uh she she was trying to schedule that um for for herself and her family to come and um for her second or third interview i think it was even with the mayor and um for her family to take a look at chattanooga and the uh the pandemic interfered with that but yes it was already in process and of course as you know this is also a chartered position and one that we do have to fill Okay, thank you. Just wanted to ask, make sure because no, I, I, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate your your fiscal um, your your fiscal hawkness there, Councilwoman. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, so uh, for Miss Farmer, if you haven't had the chance to, please um, go visit Flaming Rooster. That's on Brainer Road and oh, District Nine. Definitely. They got some great chicken. Uh, come <laughs> pay us a visit out there. Don't just stop in the in downtown area. Come on out my way. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> Miss Farmer, seeing how you can walk to the places in downtown, please feel free at any point in time to go have a latte or whatever downtown, <laughs> District 7. I will do so, sir. That's the wall this, with you, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> District okay. 4 is a little mess right now, Miss Farmer, but we'll welcome you back real soon. <laughs> Great. Vice Chair, I see yes, Ms. Sir. Madison has her hand up. I'm assuming she would still like to say something at this point. If you'll bring, you'll bring her into the conversation. Actually, no, I didn't have anything else I'd like to say more. Of oh, okay. And address uh, Councilwoman Coonrod's question. That, that was all I wanted to address. Okay, all right, thank you, ma'am. All right, Ms. Farmer, well, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. Uh, uh, anxious for you to get to work. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right. Vice Chair, yeah, you can uh, take her off. Uh, Madam Clerk, 7F, please. A resolution authorizing the Chattanooga Police Department to apply for and if awarded to accept the fiscal year 2020 local law enforcement 
Crime Gun Intelligence Center Integration Initiative Competitive Grant for 36 months beginning October 2020 through October 2023 in the amount of $700,000. Any, uh, Kunrod Ledford, is that a hand from before or you have a question? Mass was before. Okay. Okay. All right. We're good. Um, Councilman Mitchell, yep. under Public Works G through I, did we not cover these in our uh, Public Works Committee last week? I believe yes, that sir. we did. Yes, yes, sir, we did. Okay, so these have been read into the record. Um, any Anybody have any questions on G through I? If not, we have uh, no departmental reports, although, um, Madam Clerk, I noticed on our strategic planning, it did show a fire with departmental report. I just wanna make sure that we weren't supposed to have fire if they were expecting to present. No, okay. Uh, purchasing questions uh, for this evening. Does anyone have any questions about purchases? Okay. Uh, if not, what about next week's agenda? You have in your Mr. Chair, you have a hand up. Uh, Councilman Gilbert, thank you. We have two. I already asked uh, Mr. Simon to find out about it. One of them was dealing with the last one, uh, the police vehicle. I asked him how much money did we spend last year? How many cars did that cover? And then I also asked him uh, what's projected for this year? How many cars are we looking at for as getting repaired based on the amount of money that we're spending? Okay. So, you already knows that, so I guess they get it to me later on. Uh, let's see if he's, would, uh, Me, Mr. Salmon, sir? Yeah, would you bring him on? Let's see if he's got an answer for Councilman Gilbert. Yes, Councilman Gilbert, I did get your, um, your request, uh, during the time I was on, on another Zoom call, and we are checking into that information as we speak. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Sammons, you'll have that for him later on tonight then, at least at six. Trying our best to get it in time. If not before. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to uh, Tuesday, May the 12th uh, agenda. You have that in your handy folder that our clerk uh, puts together for us now and does a great job. Does anybody have any questions uh, over our uh, agenda for May the 12th? Looks like we've got Burrs, Mitchell, and Gilbert. If that's, I don't know if you still have a remaining question or is that a hand from before? Uh, Councilwoman Burrs, why don't you go first? Sure. Um, I noticed that there are four items uh, relative to finance, and I know nothing about those. Or at least nobody nobody talked to me before it got put on the agenda. Okay. So I'd like to know so, what that's about. So that's my question. Um, I have asked the attorney, I sent him an email earlier to make sure that we, um, any changes from week two to the current week uh, are either approved or run by the chair or the vice chair so that we don't have surprises uh, come up on our agenda. Let me see. Let me switch over to attendees and see. Uh, Ms. Jackson has her hand up. Vice Chair, if you'd bring her on. She's in. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Uh, good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Um, Councilman Burrs, um, sorry that you didn't get up. Uh, let me just apologize and say I'm, um, I'm sorry that you didn't get any of that information. But we do have, to your point, four resolutions on the agenda related to our deferred compensation plan. Um, when the CARES Act was approved on March 27th, a number of tax provisions related to the retirement plan was affected. So we are requesting the council to incorporate those particular provisions in the existing plan um, so that plan participants can take advantage of those particular provisions. So essentially, uh, all of the participants that may have been impacted by COVID-19 by way of them being diagnosed, 
their spouse or their dependents being diagnosed, diagnosed by COVID-19. Um, it allows them to, um, to possibly take advantage of a disbursement up to $100,000 in their existing plan. So what this does essentially is allow them to, uh, to have an disbursement of up to $100,000 without penalty from the IRS for withdrawing early. And also it allows them to pay for those taxes over the next three years once they do that. This expires uh, on the 31st of December of this year, and it is a one-time uh, activity for individuals that wanna take advantage of it. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And, and I appreciate that. I, I figured it was something like that. I guess it's a matter of form, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm assuming that whenever things appear on the agenda under that would fall normally under certain chairpersons, those have been reviewed and discussed with the chairpersons first. I, it seems to me that we're always asking for discussion after the fact. I think that if, if we're set up where chair, there are chairpersons uh, with various respective departments, it would seem to me the best forum would be that those things are discussed with the respective chair before they get on the agenda, not for permission or anything, but before they get on the agenda. Uh, it, I don't know whether Councilman Bird knew about the application for the $600,000 grant or whatever it was with the police department. I'm sure nobody would say no to that. However, I think it's just better form and out of respect that each one of the committee chairpersons be apprised of what's going on with their respective departments before the fact. So that we're not asking all these questions when it's already a, a fait accompli that it's on the agenda. Yeah. So uh, I know I keep saying form, but I just think that's proper form, Mr. Chair. No, I, I agree and I'm, um, I sent an email to Mr. Noblet, uh, making him aware of that, uh, making sure that, that we are aware of what's at least getting on our agenda. Uh, at least if it's run by me or the vice chair, we can make sure that it gets to the committee chairs as well. Uh, if there's any changes from one week, from, from week two to the current week. Well, uh, I, assuming, assuming that it doesn't come from the three week agenda. Yeah, I'm just saying that if there's something going on about uh, the police or something going on about public works or whatever, it's not a matter of you guys letting us know. It's a matter of form that the head of public works or transportation or ran it by Jerry first, uh, not for permission, but yeah. to give them a heads up. I just think that's Communication. Yes, sir. Noted. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I guess I, I've got to go similar lines here. And, and uh, I think generally speaking, public works and transportation, and, and, and I have a, a good relationship, but today, well, not today, it, it was a little bit of a weirdness going on because first of all, we had uh, the chair of planning and zoning wanting to you know, put something off um, and, and, and I was sort of questioning the rules because I wasn't sure what the rules were. And at the same time, we had two uh, items come up in public works. It was, were demolition contracts for East Brainerd. And literally they had, they were on the February 12th agenda, but today they are, when, well, when the three week, I'll call it agenda, um, came out, they had, they had just hit that agenda also. So, of course, because they were the demolition contracts for East Brainerd, I wasn't saying a lot, but it was because I thought, okay, maybe we need to hurry these two things up so we can get people under contracts and get some things cleaned up in East Brainerd. But then, as it, then today, it came that they wanted to put them off till the 19th. So they got on and then they got taken off, and that was something that. Councilman Ledford was told couldn't happen. Now you explained it very well a little bit earlier about how it was already deferred and we needed to take some action. But how did these two items get on the two week agenda and then get taken off? Um, 
and for what reason. And it, it, this, I think it's a little more of the communication that Council Person Burris is talking about that all this happened with, with really none of my knowledge other than to look at the two resolutions that had a bunch of blank areas where numbers were going to be filled in later and things like that. But they got on the 12th agenda, two week agenda. And then at the same time they hit the three week agenda. Uh, so that is definitely not the way we would usually do something. And I just want to know what those rules are that says that we can take those off, but we couldn't take the planning and zoning thing off. So, um, I don't know if I even voiced that clearly. Councilman Smith, can you help me with my question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you did really well. <laughs> okay. So that, but that was my question. I, and I don't, I, I, is that to Mr. Turney or is that to you, Mr. Chair? I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that the chair and vice chair control this agenda, but also in agreement with Councilperson Burrs that the chair chairs of the committees got to at least be in the loop on these things. Um, but um, how, 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 did, how did all that take place? But let, let, me, let me speak to um, uh, Councilman Ledford's item got put on by an act of this council. In other words, when we voted to defer to a date certain, it automatically gets on the, the agenda that way. Uh, in public works, and I, and I understand a little bit about what's going on uh, with, the, with the disaster and the cleanup in, in the East Brainerd area, them trying to get their contracts lined up so that we can get paid uh, through FEMA and make sure that we, uh, we're, we're doing things by the book. Uh, I, I guess things get put on and then taken back off. I, I would request and, and I will make sure that the department heads are in communication with the committee chairs so that they at least understand and know what's going on. And I think, I, and, and I guess I'm, 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 I'm being a little forgiving of anything that has to do with the pandemic or the cleanup in East Brainerd right now, just because it is a little bit hectic and, and chaotic. Uh, I understand that, but, uh, some of the other items, I think we can we can definitely tighten up. Uh, and, and specifically about the contracts that are involved here, sir, the there is a time frame that contracts can exist under an emergency that cannot exceed 45 days, and that was one of the issues I understood that they were running on. They were ended up having to uh, renegotiate and actually bid out that contract that was going to expire before the meeting would occur initially on the 19th. I think they have obtained an, an ability to have that go a little bit longer to get them to the 19th. So that was the reason for their concern. My concern in dealing with that was that there was an issue that was dealing with a contract where we didn't know the vendor nor the amounts. And you wouldn't know that until the day before the contract could be awarded. And I did not think that was enough time. Okay. That's okay. I, 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 I just want to make sure our rules aren't sliding or moving or in place, but I also understand we're in a little bit of an emergency situation here. So yes. that, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Bird. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just was checking on the uh, agenda for under Public Works H to see if I can get a little understanding when we get there. Uh, okay. Under Public Works. Uh, under the res uh, resolutions of ne for next week? Yes, sir. Now, now, Ms. Chair, that would be in committee next week, but but I would understand why he would like some information before he has to then turn around and vote on it. So could we get something for him? Or at least somebody get in contact with him to give him the information? Well, so hold on just one second. Uh, they've taken their hand down. Uh, I was looking to see who's here from Public Works that might be able to Ms. Sullivan raised. No, nope. Ryan. Nope. Yeah, Ms. Sullivan still has her hand up. Let's go ahead and bring her on and take Ms. Jackson off. There we go. Ms. <laughs> Sullivan, Hello. welcome back. Um, yeah. We just need I, to leave you plugged thank in. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine with me. So, um, yeah, I think that Justin Holland is with us. Is he? Um, do y'all not see him on there? Well, I didn't see him in the either. list. Do you, do you see him, Vice Chair? Going back down through, no. Maybe I missed, okay. 
Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Sullivan. Well, we'll definitely, um, Councilman, if we could just get that to you um, and before, um, I think we can probably get it to you before six o'clock tonight, but certainly before next week. But well, I think right. we can get it to you before six o'clock tonight. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Ms. Moore. Absolutely, yes, sir, thank you. And I would ask the council, again, I would ask council people on the way we work it every two weeks, there's always gonna be some, pro or not always, but most of the time there'll be something on the agenda where you probably would have to vote on it the same day it's in committee. And if there's anything you feel uncomfortable about, you can either reach out to me and I'll try to get you an answer, or you can reach out to, to if it's public works, you can reach out to Mr. Holland, transportation officer, Mr. Bailey, or you can reach out to me and I'll try to get an answer for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councilman Mitchell. Uh, Councilwoman Coonrod. Thank you, Chair. Um, and Councilman Bird, all I know is that uh, that $54, <laughs> that's, the, that's supposed to be the last of that uh, contingency there. So we can start working on other YFD centers <laughs> as well. <laughs> Proud of the work that they're doing over there and just excited that everything will be completed, so they say. Um, and not taking anything away from Avondale at all, but you got to understand as a chair of YFD, I got to advocate for the other ran down YFD centers as well. Um, and, but I want to bring it because I was looking for my purchasing thing. Um, so for the police department, for the ballistic body armor, could that not have been paid for with the grant that they're going to be receive, receiving? Uh, I have no idea. That's under, it was under police for ELF. We um, talked about it back on April the 28th. Uh, okay, now, what, oh, you're talking about under purchases, yeah, Councilwoman? Yeah, the purchase. The ballistic, well, this is the one I could print out that I had got for the police ballistic body armor. That's what I printed out. Is it something different? On 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 purchasing. Yeah. Well, maybe I got the well, wrong one. Mara, could, well, I don't hold on a minute. Let me switch back. Look at purchasing. Well, it might have got mixed up in my stuff, but it, I just wanted to know if it, why wasn't it, you know, paid for with the grant that they, seven hundred thousand, that they applied. Oh, for. I know what. So there's a police vehicle lighting and equipment installation, but I don't see any body armor on the purchasing. Okay. Not, not not on this week. Okay. Well, maybe it got caught up in my stuff, but um, I do have a question for the public works. We still under public works. Uh, for G, yes. I brought up about HG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just with that program, and I know it was a great program early on. Um, an organization in my district had received it. So, are they just doing this a one-time thing, once a year, awarding the green grants? Is it just once a year? Uh, Mara has left. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Can you bring? Try to get it. I, I can try to get you an answer, Councilperson Coonrod. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wait a minute. Let's see. We've got. Let me switch screens. Okay, Councilwoman. Okay. Let's go to the three-week agenda in your oh, folder. Oh, one more question. Chair, I'm sorry. You're out of questions tonight. No, because I just <laughs> thought about this because Russell be talking about this I. Now, I just want to, uh, Mitchell, under I for public works with the bio solids. Mm -hmm. So is that just, if we happen to, to take it for five years, is there anything in that contract that we may have missed or may have overlooked that may say that it could be extended past that? They have all these multiple times. Remember, we thought it was one way and then with another contract and come to find out they've been in the they've been getting this contract for over 30 some years because of what was in the original contract so is you, it, uh councilman mitchell yes I, of course I, I think what we would do is request that uh councilwoman coonrod be sent this contract to review 
before our uh, committee meeting next week, but could you make sure that she has that contract and, and that we address that next week in our committee meeting? Thank you, Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, any, any other questions uh, before we move on to our three-week agenda? Okay, I don't see any. Okay, let's move to our three-week agenda. Um, and just to ask, we have, we have a, an item under finance and we have an item under uh, public works, uh, a couple of blanket contracts. Uh, any questions on our three-week agenda? Councilwoman Coonrod, is that a hand from before? Oh, yeah, that was before. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair. Councilman Mitchell. Um, well, I think I need to put some thought into it, but, but, but with public works and transportation, we would generally just go over the two week agenda. In other words, next week it would be for the 12th and the 19th. Um, there might be some items. Do, do we want to start including the three week agenda in the committee meeting also, just, just to make sure some more of these things don't fall through the cracks and we get answers to council people as quickly as possible so we can make some intelligent decisions? I, I think that would be great if in your committee, uh, you would cover the two week agenda, uh, the three week agenda as well for public works and transportation. Okay, we'll start, we'll, we'll, we'll start working at that one. Yeah. And I'll yeah. make sure the, the, the uh, two administrators know that's gonna start happening. And that would give us a heads up as to what would be put on to the uh, two week agenda as well. Of course, of course we, we, we call it a three week agenda, but it's actually Maybe. items for future consideration. Um, that could be three weeks or beyond. But but I think it's I think it's still be a good idea to 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 bring those up and and be a great place to bring it up in committee. Mr. Chair, I just got a text from Mr. Holland who says he's on now. If the questions for next week's agenda, of course, I think we still have to send a contract to Councilperson Coonrod. But do we want to handle those now, or do we want to wait? Well, let me just ask Councilwoman Coonrod, would you like to hear from Mr. Holland now or, or handle it next week in committee? I, I wait. I, I want to review the contract so I can make sure my questions is legit. Okay. Okay. So the only thing I would ask Mr. Holland is to make sure that Councilwoman Coonrod gets that contract for review as soon as possible. I'll follow that up with a phone call too to make sure. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Councilman Bird and then Councilman Gilbert, I see your hand. Thank you. Uh, in the look ahead, uh, three look ahead under D18002201 gravity sewer relocation, I, that should read, I believe that should read District 8 under Public Works. Yeah, I was looking for. Okay, T tell me again which, which one that is. Councilman? Uh, contract number D18002201. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the former Tubman site. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Nobbit? Yes, sir. I, I'm pretty sure the Tubman site is District 8. All right, sir. I'll get it changed. Thank you. Councilman Gilbert. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this question is for Councilman Mitchell. Uh, can you ask your team, uh, give me an update on the sewage pipes. We have temporary sewage pipes on Shallowford, on the creek side, on South Creek, South Chickamauga Creek. Are they removed all the way? And if they're not, when are they going to be removed? And did they fix the problem mm -hmm. in the brighter area when it comes to sewage and the smell? Because I know they were working on, on that about a year ago, and I just want to see if they got to complete it. Mr. Chair, can we, can we give Mr. Holland on to answer that right now? Let's go ahead and put Mr. Holland on. I thank you. He needs a guest appearance. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Holland? Thank you, council members, for letting me uh, guest appear. Uh, did you hear the question from Mr. Gilbert? 
Yes, so that's, uh, that's part of a South Chickamauga Creek interceptor sewer system upgrade. And I don't have all of the details that you've asked about, but we can, we certainly can get you some more detailed information. If I understand your question, you're wanting to know how the project grew. Well, well, let me explain. I mean, last April of last year, um, we were said, they was told that they're going to remove the pipes by then. And I know after April, they were still there. I'm just checking to see how they've been removed because uh, it's temporary pipes for sewage. And then we fix the sewage problem in the Brandon area that caused us to do that in the first place. So if I understand your question right, you want to, you, you want information about how the project has improved sewer uh, conveyance from the Brainerd area, specific to the South Chickamauga Creek interceptor temporary lines. Correct, and how we remove the temporary lines. Yes, sir, I can, we can find out. I, I will find out, I don't know, I said yes, but I don't know the answer to that. We will find out for you and I can also have, what we will do is just uh, generate a summary of your questions back to you in an email format if that's appropriate for you. Um, yes, or you can report it next week when you come back up to talk in uh, public works and transportation. Either one, sir, is fine with me. I will go next week and just give me an answer for that. Um, and if you haven't removed them, how long would it be to be removed them? And why did we not remove them last year? What happened? We'll try to get all of those questions answered. I appreciate it, sir. And, and, and Mr. Holland, before, yes, sir. You got, before you got on, if you you look at uh, the twelfth agenda, and Councilperson Coonrod would like some information about G, and the specific question I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Councilperson, is are we giving out just one of these green grant programs a year, or are we doing more? She sees the one for Chattanooga Christian School this year. Um, I, I believe I recall one at Notre Dame a while back. Are we doing one of these a year or how often are we doing these would be the question she'd want answered. And sure, then also, I could. also uh, on I, she would like a copy of the contract as it, you know, as it relates to the biosolids data, data management system so she can be prepared to ask questions on that of you uh, next week. I, I can answer both of them or I can wait till next week, sir. She'd like to see the contract first, I believe. So, the contract is is in the as we we've provided. I think the supporting document. If, it, if it's not in there, in the agenda, electronic link will provide that to her uh, okay. immediately after this. And uh, to the to your to your first question about um, the green grants, there were there have been three recipients of the green grants. Notre Dame High School was. I think our first recipient, there's a hundred thousand dollars that's allocated annually. We are uh, allocating eighty thousand dollars for Chattanooga Christian School this year. Uh, Chattanooga Christian is matching that with another um, thirty thousand dollars, I think, to a total project amount of one hundred ten thousand dollars. And we have twenty thousand dollars that we've identified a smaller project where that um, uh, that that may be available. Thank you. All right, and then Council Byrne would like to know how he can get even more money than what you're going to spend on H uh, for future projects at Avondale. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to have an offline conversation with Council Person uh, Bird before uh, responding here. <laughs> All right, and that's what I got. It council, is there are there any other questions for Justin while we? Yes, sir. Wait, wait. I didn't. I got two more. Uh, one of them was the Greenway. I like Greenway, but the uh, water quality project they have at Brainerd uh, by the center. Uh, it's like a jungle still. Um, what's the update on that for rectify that problem? I I don't have. I don't have an update for you, but I can find one, and I will give you some more information about that. Okay, I appreciate that. 
I thought you had two more. Yeah, I lost all of them. <laughs> okay, while he's looking, I would like to let you know, and I'll call Mr. Bailey and let him know that uh, starting next week in Public Works Transportation Committee meetings, we'll not only go over the two-week agendas, but we'll also be in the, in, in the uh, well, I, I always mess the name up. I, I'm like council person or chairman Henderson. I call it the three-week agenda, but it's uh, the, the part that you all put in the queue to let us know things are coming to the, to the two-week agenda at some point. Future considerations. There you go. Thank you, Chair. I found the other question. All right, there you go. Uh, Justin, I know you were dealing with the tornado over in East Brainerd, but in the other areas, uh, there is a lot of debris still on the side of the road. And for some reason or another, um, we have a lot of debris. People not, we're not getting picked up because people might not be calling. Can we start sweeping some areas? Hold on for one minute. <laughs> Sorry, Councilman Gilbert, he's busy. I got two phones in this office. There's a lot going on. Um, we got a lot of debris in, uh, on some streets, and, and then some of it, it seems like it's been there for a minute, and I know you got a lot of people working on it, but can we not sweep things a little bit more in different areas instead of getting a call? Go ahead and sweep the streets okay. that's got a lot of debris on it. Like for well, example, you still got Tom Boulevard, you got a street on Irving Road. Um, what's your thoughts? Well, uh, yeah, uh, certainly I think rather than naming, uh, naming all the streets, we could just say that all the streets do have debris on them. And we last week, uh, late last week when I looked, we were about, we were backed up approximately 7,000 requests for brush prior to the tornado, we had about a thousand requests, and for a week or for just over two weeks, we had all of our resources allocated to East Brainerd. So we've noticed the public that we are um, will be behind in the rest of the city for several weeks, and we are uh, working hard to get caught up and working. Uh, six days a week uh, in most of our operations and extra hours six days a week. So ju it's just to clean up the rest of the city and backlog of, of requests. And there are nearly, uh, there, there's brush on nearly every street. And we recognize that. Okay, so I was going to tell them that it'll be a few more months because of, we got a backlog of 7,000 requests to remove brush. Correct. Yes, sir. And and uh, just uh, I spoke last week about the tornado cleanup. I I promised the council every two weeks I would come back with an update um, as to how we're doing in East Brainerd and what the backlog looked like in other areas of town. And I will continue to do that until we're caught up. And um, our FEMA relief contractor has uh, completed the the cleanup in uh, East Brainerd. Okay. Good. Uh, oh, Councilman Leopard, you left your hand down. I, I'm good. I have some questions okay. for Justin. I'll go offline now. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Justin at this time? Anybody? I see no hands. Nobody speaking up. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, sir. Is there Thank any you. is there any other business that needs to come before the council at this time during our agenda? Councilwoman Coonrod. Thank you, Chair. Um, I know uh, our staff and administrators have been working hard on the reopening of Chattanooga. Um, and I'm concerned about our YFD centers. I haven't really heard much. You know, I voiced my concern to a couple of people about it. Um, what is the process if they plan on opening them? I know they, we talked about, uh, Councilman Mitchell brought up about the ball fields. Um, but I'm concerned also about our YFD sites uh if they're going to be open um what's that process what what's going to happen or if they're even going to open um you know i would like for them to stay closed until we reconvene for schools because we're talking about the same kids that go to school that's going to be at our yfd centers and i've you know tossed and turned and, and weighed my options about even speaking about it because i know a lot of people 
that utilize the recreation centers, they use it for more than just a recreational site for people to go to. They use it as a safe haven. They use it as a daycare. They use it as a sitting service. They use it as a place of comfort, a place to get something to eat, safety, right? And um, I'm happy that we're able to provide all of those things as well as, you know, being an entity for our latchkey kids. And I was, I was one of those kids. Um, that was dropped off at the center and to be there for hours at a time. And my only meal at times would come from the center. But uh, my concern is beyond that is that right now we're in a crisis. We're in a pandemic and it's about the health of our kids and our staff. Um, and I know some people may not agree with me and may, you know, feel upset that, you know, with me saying that I think our center should remain closed. Uh, for an extended amount of time until we can figure this thing out because I, what I would hate to happen is for our kids to congregate and of course it will be more than 10 kids um, at this at our sites facilities and they get sick. Uh, we've been push, making a push to say that um, black people need to get tested. However, we're not saying no one is taking their kids to get tested. What does that look like? So I feel like we need to be uh, protecting them and, you know, making sure um, that we're educating our families that do utilize our YFD centers on what that looks like and the why behind it and, you know, help them to figure out other options. Like maybe, you know, getting with your family that can help offset uh, babysitting. Um, that could, it's a lot of people providing meals and around a lot of people that attend our YFD sets. Uh, centers we have to start being honest because they a lot of them get assistance in food stamps which right now they've been increasing so none of our kids none of our families should actually be hungry right but we're not really looking out for our senior populations when it comes to that as far as making sure that they're they're being able to eat and our seniors do frequent our YFD centers as well so I just wanted to lay that on the table. Um, Councilwoman Coonrod um, I've asked Mr. Hayes to give us an update on, on community testing and of course our small business outreach, but Mr. Hayes, I, I see you're still on. If you would, uh, under other business tonight, just address Councilwoman's Coon, Councilwoman Coonrod's concerns about the YFD for just a, just a few minutes this afternoon at six under other business, please, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let me switch back. Okay, I see no other hands up. So if no one has any other business for the council at this time, we will adjourn till six o'clock. Oh, let's see. Councilwoman Coonrod, did you put your hand back up? Yeah, I just wanted to say this to Councilwoman Burr. She done jumped off, but I appreciate her speaking up. Uh, you know, I already got a big set of eyes and I'm making them even bigger because we've been saying that, man, I know well uh, the whole time that we've been on council, right, Burr? Like, we, we need to get the information. So uh, I just wanted to tell her thank you for speaking up. Thank you, Councilman Mitchell, for making sure that they heard your part on that, too. So maybe, Burr, we're not out here alone like we thought we were. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, we, we will adjourn till six o'clock. All right. Thank y'all. Very well. Thank you.